Hello and welcome back to the Source One podcast. Each year, the Institute for Supply Management publishes its 30 under 30 list. Recognizing supply management's rising stars, it provides a snapshot of procurement excellence and an example for the next generation of professionals. This year's list features a pair of Source One consultants, Caitlin Krigbaum and Elizabeth Skipor. I sat down with both winners to discuss their professional journeys, their hopes for the future, and their take on what it means to excel in supply chain management. Here's my conversation with Elizabeth. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Source One Podcast. I'm here today with 30 Under 30 Supply Chain Rising Star winner, Elizabeth Skipor. How's it going, Liz? Good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Glad to have you on the podcast and super excited that Source One had not one but two winners of the 30 Under 30 Award this year. Yeah, it's definitely an exciting time. Yeah. And even more exciting with the ISM conference almost uh, almost underway. So to, uh, to jump right into things, the theme for this year's ISM conference is SPARK. Uh, I'm hoping you could speak to a few of the SPARKs from your career in procurement. When did you determine that this was the field for you? Yeah, absolutely. My career started in retail and my interest was really focused in how consumers purchase their products. And I thought the best way to get into that was um, exploring how retailers provide the products to their consumers and then merge my career and get into um, the buying position. So I started with supply chain management and um, after that I was interested in um, apparel still. So I joined a company, a private company that sourced fabric for clothing designers and I luckily got to travel the world um, sourcing for a lot of the major brands that we know today. And then from there, I wanted to get into category management, which was a mixture of, you know, both supply chain um, and a lot of the purchasing of the products. So I found that I was pretty good at identifying what our consumers needed and how to purchase them effectively and also how to market them to ensure that we were reaching the margins that we needed internally. And then um, I wanted to get into you know, more general practice and apply my expertise across many different categories. So I'm interested in the moment that that spark really started to become a flame. Uh, Is there a key milestone or a big win from earlier in your career that sticks out as formative? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when I was traveling the world really to source fabrics, I mean, you have a lot of time um, on a plane flying over to China and I just I can't explain the feeling but I felt that I was doing what I was meant to do and I wanted to follow that path and I wanted to understand more specifically how consumers purchased many different items and not just apparel so um, it really led me to get into more um, CPG type categories to get much more exposure to that. I think it's just a natural interest of mine as to why people do what they do. And I think with that, it, it transfers pretty nicely over to your purchasing activities from a buying perspective and sourcing perspective to meet those needs. And I think I just knew I had a passion for it. I was good at it. And I think at that moment on the plane over to China, I was like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And could you relate uh, any advice or, or words of wisdom you received from early on in your career? What, what, if anything, has helped shape your approach? The biggest advice that I have been given was essentially just be honest. If you're honest with your work, if you're honest with your suppliers, Um, If you're honest with your teammates, you can then collaborate to, you know, formulate results. You want to keep relationships mutually beneficial. Um, You want to put everything on the table just to make sure everyone has all of the correct information and is able to provide all the correct information. So I think the biggest thing is just, you know, being honest with your work and, and honest with the initiatives and what the goals are. So as part of our comms team, I'm, I'm often writing about the sort of changing face and shape of procurement. And I expect in your decade in the space, you've, you've seen a lot of those changes and maybe played a role in bringing them about. Uh, in a nutshell, how would you say the procurement space has evolved in your career? Sure. I think people are purchasing on a more holistic level. 
looking at things um, holistically from the top down rather than focusing on, you know, bottom up really. So it's what are your overall budgets? Um, where does your purchasing um, yield the, the largest value from your suppliers? So it's really applying more strategy into purchasing rather than just purchasing and, and potentially dealing with the repercussions at the end. I think, you know, going into purchasing with a larger plan and goal in mind has been a huge change in the industry. Um, and I think that's why, you know, where I work now, why strategic sourcing is such, you know, a big need for a lot of these larger clients that we work with today. And um, is there anything you would credit with, with bringing about those changes? What's, um, what's encouraging organizations to think differently about how they uh, source and procure their products? Sure. I think over time, you know, in the industry, a lot of items and products coming from overseas are becoming more expensive. And, um, you know, instead of, you know, reducing headcount at your company and, and wanting to maintain the talent that you have, you have to start purchasing strategically and driving those costs down where they make sense and, and understanding where your dollars are going and, if your internal team is being compliant with the contracts that you've executed, I think a lot of that goes into, you know, a lot of external direct costs are becoming expensive. Services are becoming expensive. So I think that's driving a lot of the changes that are going on um, across the board. And have the changes in the procurement space helped change the definition of, of what it means to excel as a procurement professional? Sure. I think that the biggest thing about being a procurement professional is, you know, being ahead of the trend. What do you foresee coming forward? It forces you to really think, okay, I'm executing X, Y, and Z projects, but what is it going to look like in a year or two from now? And you want to make sure that your clients are set up for success, not only um, in the short term, but the long term. So I think with that change of, you know, looking at things holistically, it is really important. For example, my colleague and I have been executing projects in the marketing space from a holistic manner, looking at marketing, you know, from a bird's eye view before we, you know, dig in and identify projects and, and cost savings opportunities. I think it's it's very beneficial not only for us to come up with a strategic plan to be successful for our client, but also um, set them up for success in the long term. And are there any new skills you see becoming increasingly important uh, in procurement over the next several years? Obviously, we all know we need to be, you know, well-versed in, in math and finance and everything like that. But I think there is also a human aspect to the position that we really need to take into account. You know, being able to interact and being able to explain things um, very detailed, you know, whomever you're working with may not know all the ins and outs and all the facets of the type of information you're negotiating or why you're negotiating and where you're getting the information um, to negotiate against. So I think there's a piece of the job that is very, um, human and especially for me being in the consulting space it's being able to really listen to your clients needs but also make sure you're delivering results there's also you know that human piece of wanting to balance everyone's goals and making sure everyone's needs are met as well so as we've sort of implied it's a particularly exciting year uh, to discuss the future of procurement and, and its professionals. You know, 2020 is right around the corner uh, for what seems like forever now. We've been talking about procurement 2020. That's been kind of our idea of the future. Uh, I'm interested in learning how you'd advise a professional who's just getting started in the space, um, you know, at, at this exciting time. How can an emerging professional, in, in your opinion, set themselves up to ultimately mature into a, a rising star of the profession? Yeah, so earlier I was speaking to how we need to stay you know, ahead of the trend. And I think that's something that's really important because from a procurement standpoint, when you're helping someone figure out strategic ways to purchase their services or, or goods, um, as well as wanting to negotiate and implement successful contracts that, you know, are going to be either, you know, one year or even multi-year, you want to stay ahead of the trend and making sure that those contracts are not only beneficial in the short term, but long term as well. But I think um, attending a lot of, you know, industry talks and, and industry events that are going on with whatever category and vertical that you work under is really important. Um, a lot of the companies 
um, that you work with would be at those shows and they'd be talking about, you know, new innovations that they're um, implementing or coming up with. So I think the biggest thing is to attend and be a part of the industry that you are working in. And I think that'll help you not only make contacts, but also get a lot of the information that you need that's coming up in the space that you're working in. And uh, how can employers uh, help that process? What can they do to ensure they're nurturing their rising stars? Right. I think the biggest thing would be to, you know, encourage um, their employees to attend these types of conferences and, and fund them. I think in the long run, it is beneficial um, you know, for employers to make sure that their employees are well versed and, and ahead of the game and making sure that they're successful for their clients. So I think just supporting, you know, events and activities and, you know, help supporting financially going to, you know, whatever would help gain the knowledge in that space. Well, Liz, that about covers it for my questions. Congratulations again, and thanks for taking the time. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks again for listening to the Source One podcast. Don't forget, Elizabeth, Caitlin, and the rest of this year's 30 Under 30 recipients will be formally recognized next month at ISM 2019. We hope to see